Hola, this is Guy Pacha with the Weekly Pele Report for February 28th of 2024. I'm down here in Patagonia, uh, Chile. And uh, it's a very, very amazing, amazing place uh, to have the Sun conjunct Mercury, conjunct Saturn in Pisces all day today and Mercury is you know passing by so it's a triple conjunction it's called a stellium the moon is in Libra uh, she's going into Scorpio and then she's going to be squaring Pluto uh, today tomorrow uh, Mercury moves into a sextile with Jupiter and Venus will be sextiling Chiron on Friday and then by Sunday we have the third quarter moon. Yes, moon square sun. It is the waxing, it's the waning square, 270 degrees. She's at 13 degrees, 32 minutes of Sagittarius. And very powerful, Venus square Uranus. Same time as the square moon. And if we want to talk about powerful, I think that's pretty powerful right there. <laughs> yeah, baby. Frickin' moon is in Sagittarius by Saturday. So it's going to be like really super powerful. And finally, on Monday, Mercury sextiles Uranus. Yeah. And uh, the moon by then is in Capricorn. So let me just find a nice little spot here uh, to look at the camera and uh, tell you a little bit more about what that means. All right. Yeah, baby. Woo. Check it out. <sighs> this is as close as I could get today, but we're hiking up there tomorrow. Those are the horns. They're called the horns. Yeah. These are the, the, the solid granite, 130 million years old. And on top of that, the black is another layer of sediment that is only, darn it, what did they say? Maybe 20 million years or something? The whole geography of Patagonia down here is absolutely phenomenal. How'd you like that entrance? That was the hike we did yesterday. The thing is that I don't really have a lot of time to put together a freaking Pele report, so this is pretty ad hoc. <laughs> we'll kind of see what comes out of it. I was trying to think of a song in the last couple minutes here because I'm teaching a workshop. And we're hiking and teaching and uh, doing astrology and chart readings and everything. And whew, Yeah, there's a lot going on here. But um, let's just share a little bit about, and this is what? You know, Sun, Mercury, Saturn, conjunction. Saturn is pressure, concentration, form, structure, uh, you know, condensation. I mean, it is all about, yes? Uh, even even with you know Capricorn, Saturn, and the tenth house all have these things in common. They have expectations, demands, duties, taking life seriously, responsibilities to other people, to the next seven generations, not just yourself. This is a time to like really step up to the plate. And here comes Sun and Mercury. They come around once a year and they visit Saturn. So we're having a little uh, Saturn uh, boardroom meeting in all of, I mean, of all the signs in Pisces. <laughs> a board meeting in Pisces? <laughs> like uh, Pisces and board meetings just don't go together. <laughs> right? So what is this about? we might ask <laughs> and the answer yeah you know the, the, this answer is to seriously saturn you know the bottom line of saturn is reflection 
we need to reflect deeply, inwardly, about spirit, about the, di the divine, about our dreams. This is a time when our dreams can really speak to us. Saturn rules goals. We're going to set a goal. This is a spiritual goal. And we, where do I really want to see myself on a soul level, on a spiritual level, 7, 14, 21, 28 years from now? And, and most powerfully with Pisces is what do I need to let go of that is in the way hindering or slowing or being, uh, you know, an anchor to my boat that wants to set sail. So Pisces has a lot to do with removal, with, uh, you know, with goodbye uh, and, and surrendering to where the wind takes me where spirit takes me, where the divine takes me. And, and so we have this time period now, and it's, it's very powerful because Pluto, right? Venus, Mars, Sun, Mercury, Neptune, six planets in the last two signs of Aquarius and Pisces, the 11th and the 12th signs. I mean, this is a time of closure. This is a time of ending. Even Venus and Mars and Pluto up in Aquarius is about liberation. Non-attachment. Liberation through non-attachment. I am not attached to anything but truth. To anything but where, where spirit guides me in the future. So, you know, Aquarius has to do with the third eye. And Pisces has to do with the crown. We are up above duality. We're up above two eyes, two ears, two nose, two, yeah, two, 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 all the way down, two feet, <laughs> ten toes, but <laughs> that's funny. Pisces rules the, the feet, too. It rules the top and the bottom. <laughs> Leave it to Pisces, right? So, but you just, I want, you know, th this is very powerful because it has to do with the Sabian symbol, even for the moon. Now let's look at the moon. The moon is coming through Libra into Scorpio, which is also about letting go, dying, right? Uh, to forces beyond my control, to Mother Nature. And then she's going into Sag, which wants freedom, expansion of consciousness, greater understanding of natural law and the totality. And there's where we come into our square. Yeah, Sagittarius, square Pisces, sun in Pisces, conjunct Saturn, squaring the moon up there in Sagittarius. I have to read to you the uh, Sabian symbol for this uh, degree. It's I think it's 13 degrees, 32 minutes. That's the 14th degree of Sagittarius. Very powerful. The Great Pyramid and the Sphinx. The enduring power of occult knowledge and of its quasi-divine custodians. Seed men or seed people, let's say, of a previous cycle of existence. Call it Atlantis, call it Lemuria, call it the, you know, the, the post-Atlantean age, call it way back. The belief in an original tradition based on the perfect knowledge of the archetypal principles and forms which underlie all manifestations of life on this earth. This is going farther back than 130 million years, right? This is going far. Oh, we're talking, you know, of all manifestations of life on earth. And in parentheses, he says, and by extension in the cosmos. You know, Rudolf Steiner said this is the fourth incarnation of earth. That earth goes in and out of incarnations. Uh, extension of the cosmos is deeply rooted in man's consciousness. The Great Pyramid and the Sphinx 
are witnesses to such a tradition, especially for the Western world. The symbol implies that such an archetypal knowledge remains the foundation upon which our minds can still build solid and valid formulations. As new evolutionary developments are pending. Dun, 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 dun. This symbol suggests that this occult knowledge and the traditional process of acquiring it is still available. <laughs> they just found some new stuff over there by the pyramids. And that by accepting their principles, modern people can best meet the challenge of our present world crisis. The symbol, interpreted from a personal point of view, points to the greatness of a soul's past achievements and the value of trying to re-evoke this past. What is revealed is the power of spiritual ancestry. Let's tie this up. Let's tie this in with our spiritual ancestry. Saturn, the Lord of Karma, moving through Pisces from 2023 till 2026. Yes, close to three years in this ending, finishing, closing phase. Saturn is disciplined control, endurance, perseverance in the sign of spirit, of divination, of mysticism, of occult understanding, of the, the white lodge, the secret brotherhood, the, uh, you know, however, you know, the, the plant medicine, the ancient ways, the indigenous people's, uh, you know, traditions. There is knowledge still available that will help us through these present crises. Well, this present crisis is about what? To me, a lot of it is losing our humanity, becoming cyborgs, the transhumanism movement, the aramonic influence of machines, yes, and technology invading human consciousness. We have to understand that we are more than these physical bodies. We are more than psychological beings and even emotional beings. We are spiritual beings that reincarnate lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And we have a physical body. In Kundalini Yoga, we have 10 bodies. But people are very familiar with the etheric body, which nobody is dealing with with the effects, right, of our technology on the etheric body. How many studies have been done of the effect, okay, of our medicines and our technology on the astral body, right? And then our spiritual body. I, I, it, this is, so we're really dealing with, you know, uh, uh, way less than half the deck. <laughs> when it comes to understanding exactly what the heck it is to be human. What is a human being? And this is a cult. A cult just means secret or hidden. This is hidden knowledge of, of, of the depth, the width, the height, the timelessness, the multidimensional nature of the human spirit, of the human soul that goes lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So we're, you know, it is so much of the, of the crisis of today is this narrow-minded, you know, blinders as to, uh, you know, what a human being is. It's dangerous. And so now we have Saturn moving through Pisces. It's time to reflect. 
on the cosmic spiritual nature of reality. And the Sun and Mercury join Saturn. And then they're going to they're gonna pass by Saturn and they're going to come up to Neptune. Right? And give us even more of a blast. <laughs> and, you know, by that time the Moon will have moved from Sag into Capricorn. But I really want to uh, contrast this sober, serious, deep, slow, intentional, conscious, moving into the mystical spiritual realms of Pisces with the other side. And what do we have? We have, you heard it, Aquarius is sextile Taurus. So Venus and Mars are moving through Aquarius, sextiling Jupiter, sextiling Uranus, right? I, I, and, and, you know, the moon's even going to come up into Capricorn and trine Jupiter and Uranus. And, and this is a 300 degree sextile. So there's 60, a sextile is 60 degrees apart, right? And you have the separating sextile, which is starting off with new stuff. And then you have the 300 degree sextile, which is again having to do with blasting off and letting go and going into vaster, higher realms, like to the top of the horn. Is the top of the horn disappearing in the cloud? It's it, Actually, it's been in the clouds a long time since I've been here. It's very really something else but anyway where was I fast and slow uh, you, know, you know the sextile the 360 degree even the moon third quarter degree this is about breaking free of conventional of the normal of uh, you know of the conditioned uh, of the you know the status quo and moving out stepping out jumping out Rocket ship taken off. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, wherever you are. <laughs> but, and this is what the mantra is about today. Be careful. It can be tempting to just blow it all up. Forget it. This job's not working. This relationship's not working. This life isn't working. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. But whoa, 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 whoa. Just wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Sun, Mercury, Saturn says, you need to connect with your spiritual divine nature. You, your soul has an intention. It has a purpose. You are here for da 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 And it would be wise, it would behoove you, yes, to really get some guidance. To, you know, to to pray, to meditate, to talk to God, goddess, to talk to Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, to talk to Great Spirit, to talk to Source, to have a communion, to have a communication, to have an interaction. I mean, Joseph just didn't, you know, you know, like pick up his stuff and, you know, uh, head off to Egypt for nothing. He had a dream. <laughs> so what I'm saying is we need to tap into the super sensible spiritual world. We need to tap into the divine. We need to be guided, not by impatience, not by frustration, not by irritability, uh, not by anger, not da, 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 da. you know, it's, it's like, no, it's, it, 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 you know, for me, I've always felt like when you go somewhere, um, you want to move somewhere, not because you're running away, because you're running towards. You want to let go of things because you're headed towards something better, something higher, something more, something that, 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 that you've never done before. 
You're not escaping, avoiding, denying. It's like, no, 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 man. My research is taking me into the unknown. I'm going into the unknown because, you know, I've, I've listened. I've, I've been guided. I had a dream. I have, I have spirit with me, in me, through me, speaking, acting, loving, expressing. So I, it's, it's nice to be called to places. So I think that, you know, this, this, this time period, yes, it is about letting go. It is about, uh, you know, moving on. It is about, you know, there can be some sudden radical shifts and changes in our lives. People and places and, you know, hopes and dreams coming and going and changing and shifting. Yes. But it doesn't have to lead to useless, senseless destruction, hurt, harm, trauma, shock. No, this, this can be done, you know, gently, sweetly, compassionately, and we can be moving towards, yes, something even greater rather than just simply, you know, crash and burn. I was thinking actually the, the song for this could be burning down the house, <laughs> but I think I've already used that song in a previous Pele report. <laughs> So maybe before I uh, get this uploaded to YouTube, I will think of a better song for this week. I mean, I really wanted it to have a spiritual connotation of like, you know, really reaching for, uh, you know, spirit illumination is a nice word, right? You know, uh, we want to be illuminated and, and out of that illumination or out of that revelation, then I will know what should stay and what should go. Should I stay or should I go? Do, 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 do. That's another song. I forget the rest of it. It's kind of, whatever. <laughs> Cheesy, bud. <laughs> Let me read you the mantra for today. I got to get, got to get cruising here. It would be wise for me to see exactly what it means to be free before I destroy the life I am living I need to get clear on what spirits wanting freedom is not license freedom is not what is maybe portrayed in our movies and books and uh, you know just you know be anything, do anything, go anywhere, have anything, whatever, get your way, get your ego desires satisfied. That's freedom. No. No, if we really look at freedom, it goes very deep. Yeah. And what appears as great freedom in very many people's eyes is an inner discipline, is an inner devotion, is an inner guidance system that is so powerful that it blows off some of the ordinary conventional rules, laws, or expressions here on planet Earth. And people go, wow, that looks like, you know, real freedom. But inside, that individual, you know, is, is not, I don't know. When you're, when you're following, uh, the, the road gets more narrow and more narrow and more narrow as you do spirit work. And appearances can be very deceiving. Some of the hardest workers can appear to be super free, but they're really doing a lot of spirit work. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough for today. One more time. Yeah. <clears throat> it would be wise for me to see exactly what it means to be free. Before I destroy the life I am living, I need to get clear on what spirit's wanting. Time to meditate, 
time to con you know really reflect time to tap in to the highest deepest mysteries truths and guidance and then out of spirit guidance out of the occult knowledge and the ancient wisdom teachings out of yeah out of the depths that's where we move from it's about action not reaction yeah it's about moving towards not moving away and th this this is yeah this is what this week can really be all about so i wish you the very best with all the changes that are going on in so many people's lives these days that you take the time yeah to do it with guidance with wisdom and with patience namaste aloha so much love Thank you.